So, it's no secret that Blender comes with a fully featured smoke simulation platform that can be pretty intimidating for some people to get into. That with all its settings for its effectors, forces, domains, source objects, and so on. If you're one of those people, well, you've come to the right place. I'll be showing you how I went from default cube to this. Well, the smoke part at least. I'll be going over the process of setting up your simulation scene, working with effectors, forces, baking, and finally how to shade your smoke materials. If you would like to see how I sculpted and textured this skull chalice model first, links are in the description. So with that out of the way, let's get started. The two things you're going to need to set up your smoke scene are a smoke domain and a smoke source. To create a domain, just add a simple cube, making sure that it's encasing whatever area you want the smoke simulation to take place in. Then with the cube selected, go to the physics tab, add fluids, set the type to domain and the domain type to gas. And that's it. Oh, and quick side tip, make sure your domain is only as big as you need it. Any new space in the domain will still come at the cost of performance when it comes to the simulation. So, now that we have our domain, the last thing we need is a smoke source. Sources are really just any object mesh and can be any size or shape. Want your entire character to be a smoke source? Sure, just have fun with it. In my case, I want a smoke to come out of the mouth, eye sockets and top of the skull. So I start selecting polygons in that area, duplicating them, and then pressing P to separate my selection into a new object. Now, the way to turn these objects into a smoke source is to first make sure they're selected, navigate to the physics tab again, add fluid, set the type to flow, flow type to smoke, and flow behavior to inflow. Inflow will make sure that your source is constantly adding smoke to the scene, which is what I want for my scene. And that's it. Our smoke scene is set up and we can start playing with the settings now. Oh, before you do that, quick tip to make your workflow easier, go add a new window to your layout, set that window to properties, select your domain, navigate to the physics tab, and click the pin icon on the top right. Boom, your smoke domain settings are now always visible and handy in your UI, no matter what object you have selected. A huge time saver. Now with the scene set up, just hit play to start the simulation and see where we're at. Cool, cool. The smoke is totally going the wrong way and not colliding with the skull mesh at all, but it's a good start. To make the smoke fall instead of rise, just invert the buoyancy heat and the buoyancy density to be a negative value for each. Pretty simple. To make the smoke collide with the mesh, select it, go to the physics tab, add fluids to the type to effector and effector type to collision. Sweet. Now let's try playing the sim again. Now we're getting somewhere. First glaring issue is the smoke is not disappearing, instead slowly filling up the domain scene to the point where you can start to see it colliding with the edges of our domain. To fix this, just enable the dissolve option in your domain and specify a lifetime for your smoke. I set mine to about 90 since I want the smoke to barely touch the ground before disappearing. The next issue I notice is the smoke is sort of just going straight down and not pluming forward and over the face of the skull like I wanted to. To fix that, I just add an initial velocity to the smoke sources in the eye socket and the top of the skull along the X and Y axes. For the sources in the mouth, I end up adding normal velocity, which just makes your smoke go in the initial direction of the normals in your mesh. Great for sources of smoke that are supposed to go in several specific directions. Also, the smoke is happening way too fast for my liking, so I lower the time scale by half. And while we're here, I check on adaptive subdomain and make sure it's on. This will basically speed up your simulation with really no downside, so just do it. And all right, let's play this again. That's cool. Now the skull is getting properly smoked up and I'm getting the vibe I'm after. The one thing missing is that the smoke movements feel a little bit uniform. There's not enough of that cool shapes that happen from the smoke twisting and turning on itself, so let's introduce some of that. I start by adding a little vorticity to the domain. Just a little, 0.04 for now. I don't want to overdo it too much. This basically will add turbulence to the smoke, but will not change the overall profile very much. The next way to introduce more noise is, you guessed it, to turn on the noise option. Now there is an important setting here, which you're gonna wanna turn on even if you don't want any noise in your scene. That's the uprest factor. Just turn this one on no matter what you're doing. If you don't want the noise that comes bundled with these settings, just lower the strength to zero, but keep the uprest factor to at least two. All right, and the final thing I want to add are some external forces to really break up the smoke and introduce some real turbulence. We do that by, surprisingly, adding a turbulence object. 
It does what it sounds like it does. I add two in front of the skull in animated strength and motion with a noise curve to add even more random turbulence to the scene. I tweak around some of their base strength values and area of influence and then play the simulation again. Great, now I can go ahead and start raising the main resolution divisions that we'll use to make our final simulation. I like raising the divisions by around 24 each time, playing the sim to make sure the smoke still looks good, tweak some values as needed along the way, and then rinse and repeat. I arrive at my sweet spot of around 184 divisions, hit the bake all button, and then proceed to go to bed. A couple of hours later and this is what I ended up with. Cool, now let's apply some materials to it. First things first, add a material to your smoke domain. Delete any principled BSDF node present, add a principled volume shader, and plug it into the volume output, not the surface one. Adjust the color to list what you want and turn the density up or down and you're done. Well, kind of. You could just render it out as is, but we can go much deeper than that. Want to have smoke controlled by its density? Easy, just add a volume info node plug it into the density node to a color ramp and the color ramp to the color socket in the volume shader. Add whatever colors you want and you're done. You might have to add some math notes in between the volume and the color ramp, then mess around with the exponent value until the color ramp shows up in the smoke. Now that I have a nice subtle gradient set for my color, I move on to tweaking the density. Similar to the color, I add a volume info node, plug the density to a math node set to power, then plug the output into another math node set to multiply, then finally plug that into the density input in your shader. With this node set up, I can now adjust the density contrast, as I like to call it, just by messing around with the exponent and multiply values. Finally, I want to add a subtle glow to the densest area of the smoke. Basically, I copy the node setup I did for the density, but plug that into the emission strength input on the principled volume shader instead. Just like we did for the density, just tweak the exponent and multiply values to change the intensity and density cutoff for the glow. I'm going for a really subtle effect here, but feel free to make some experiments with crazy emissive volumes of your own. And with that, we're pretty much done with our smoke. I add a floor plane, apply an HD brick texture from CZ0 Textures to sell a spooky vibe, and set up the lighting, two camera shots, and then send it out to render. A whole week later, I import all the rendered frames into After Effects, do some color correction, levels adjustment, add a light dust slash mist to the overall scene using a fractal noise effect, and it's done. I hope you found this video useful and hopefully you're feeling a little less intimidated by the smoke tools inside Blender. If you have any follow-up questions regarding this project, definitely put them in the comment section below and I will try to get to them. All in all, really happy with how this skull boy turned out. This was definitely one of the more fun projects I've done, mostly due to how enjoyable the sculpting process is over the traditional hard surface route, in my opinion. So this pretty much concludes the Skull Chalice series. Stay tuned for more 3D projects on this channel in the future. I'll keep a secret what's next on the docket for now, but if you follow me on Instagram, you might already have a clue what it's going to be. Anyways, until next time.